But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. <laughs>
his team will never answer any question and they are the one who invite us to Islam and actually our brother uh, Omad uh, he made a video about uh, Sheikh Uthman is missing I don't know if you watch it um, it's like a movie actually you know, when I saw, saw it first time it says warning this video contains graphic content I said what the heck is that that must be a horror movie you know or what is that you know hey guys look something's really been bothering me uh since we've debated sheikh uthman we haven't been able to find him anymore <laughs> like he just disappeared off the face of the earth <laughs> where where are you sheikh uthman where have you been where 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 where, where are you sheikh uthman where have you been Sheikh Uman! Where, 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 where are you, Sheikh Uthman? Where have you been? I, I come here every week to Uthman's turf. Now it's my turf. Now it's our turf. It's not his anymore. He's been running for weeks. He's been running for weeks. He's been running for weeks. Where, 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 where are you, Sheikh Uthman? He's been running for weeks. Where are you, Sheikh Uthman? been running for weeks. I've been looking all over for you, man. Put his pictures on every milk carton. We have a shake missing. Missing shake. Where, 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 where are you, Shake Uthman? We have a shake missing. Call, dial this number. 818, find your shake. We have a shake missing. Find your shake. <laughs> That's a good one. Anyway. And you know, they are missing since long time ago. Those cameras don't dare even to say hello to me. And imagine, you know, this, uh, you see, this is what, uh, what you should do, learn. You know, uh, people, they get upset when I say David Wood, he went there, he did not debate. Yeah, this is what happened. I mean, this guy is not a doctor. I don't know what his education, maybe high school, but he did the right thing. And he did the fact check, fact check. Very simple rule. Abdul, he says something to you, stop. Let us do fact check. So when somebody have a PhD and he do not do fact check, so what kind of PhD is, is that? Is it this is what PhD is about? You do fact check. You don't make just on your statement. So all what he did, he did fact check, and he found that everything they are lying is a, in a saying is a lie. Very simple. You do not need to be a PhD person. Never take what a Muhammad and he say to you for granted. They lie. You noticed that each time a Muslim he say something to me, and you will see some naive Christian, they say to me, let him talk, let him talk. No, we don't let him talk. We want to check the fact which he said already. He was talking. Shut up your mouth. If you don't like it, go leave. This is not a place where just people say what they want to say. Here we have fact check. If you fail with your fact check, it's mean you have no fact and you are a liar. We are not here just to talk. Talk is cheap. Talk is useless. If none of the talk is a fact. We will open our Skype. And as you see, the Muhammadan are running away from debating us. And I'm glad to see some young Christians, they are doing a good job and they are learning how to do fact check on the lies of Islam. Islam without lies dies. That's always something you have to put in your mind. So when a Muslim, especially the one who grew a beard, is trying to introduce for you his religion, the number, number one thing you need to ask yourself, how many lies he said to me in the last 60 seconds? Not 60 years, in the last 60 seconds. They love to lie. And so, you know, Islam without lying does not survive. My Skype is open. If you are a Muslim and you like to join us and prove us wrong, we will do fact check together and we will see uh, how Islam can function after we do fact check. Uh, there is something very simple, you know, about uh, even Christians, you know, when, we do, when they talk. You know, a Christian, he meet a Muslim, suddenly the Christian, he will start saying what he heard in the church. 
uh, we are saved by the blood of Jesus. Then you ask him, okay, what does that mean? He starts like, uh, he didn't know. You know, he just, he's copying. The same as the Muslims, you know, Muslims are copy-paste. There's many Christians, they are copy-paste. Uh, we are saved, uh, Jesus saved us from our, our, he paid for our sin. Okay, what does that mean? Uh, uh, he is like, you know, he, uh, he died for us. Okay, but what does that mean? So you need to first, before you claim to be Christian, to do fact check on yourself and what you are saying and how much you understand it and how much you are able to represent what you learned. Not just saying words, especially when you speak to people who they are not Christians, who do not know what does that mean. Uh, one of you here I just asked me in Patreon, and we said one million times, don't send me email in Patreon asking questions. We are here. I go almost every day, live. Ask me the question. He said, an Ahmadiyya, he said to him, why you don't do follow the Sabbath? And, you know, I asked myself, why a Christian himself cannot answer such a question? First of all, is, uh, are we Jews? Isn't it, this is the command was given to the Jews? So why you don't say to him, why you don't yourself as a Muslim? You Muslim, you claim that Musa was a, was a Muslim. As long as Allah, he gave the order to Musa's people, to do follow the Sabbath, then you Muslims are obligated to follow it too. Aren't you keep saying that Muhammad is and Moses is the same? And Moses was a Muslim, Isa was a Muslim, Abraham was a Muslim. So how come the Muslim Moses, he have Sabbath and you don't? Why you don't resp you know, respond right away in the speed of light and get them busted? And even the stupid Quran say clearly that this is a command Allah he gave to Moses to give to his people. But because the Muslims, they say that the, 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 the Jews are the same as Muslims, uh, specifically Musas and his people, uh, then the Muslims, they have to follow. And as you see, Sabbath is very serious for Allah, to the point he made those who transgress in the Sabbath, pigs and monkeys, chapter 2, verse number 65. And this is alone actually proving to us that Islam is a, is a fraud. Because if Allah, he made somebody pig and a monkey for transgressing or, you know, uh, like doing something wrong by not obeying the Sabbath, he made him a pig and a monkey. What about rape? What about child molestation? What about killing? Which one is more uh, ugly? Somebody, he decided to uh, uh, water his plant on Saturday or somebody, he raped a child. So Allah, he will make you a, a monkey and a pig uh, for disobeying Sabbath, but he will not punish you for the bigger crime. Uh, obviously, this is a fiction. And as you see, this is Musa speaking to his people about the Sabbath, and he, omar, uh, he ordered them to do so. And you will see here, it says that Allah, he took a covenant with the Jews. So the covenant, even in the stupid Quran, it was a covenant to the Jews. To do what? To follow the Sabbath. But the funny is, if we ask the Muhammadan, where is the Ten Commandments which God he gave to Moses? We will find that Muhammad himself, he failed in every single commandment. Not to forget to mention that the dummy Muhammad, he claimed that Allah He misled the Christians and the Jews from following the right day, right day. According to the stupid Muhammad, the right day is Friday. And Allah misled the Christians, deceived them. You see, it says in Arabic, Adallah, Adallah. You see, the Muslim translator say diverted. That's a lie. There's a huge difference between the diverted and Adallah. Adallah means he deceived. You can open a dictionary. And this is the Arabic in the front of you, Adallah. And this is a better translation, which is funny. The same website, the same hadith, different translation. Look here, it says. The message of Allah said, Allah uh, led those who come before us astray. <laughs> Did you see it? So when a dummy Abdul, he asks you, why you don't follow Saturday? You say to him, well, Allah, he deceived us from following the Saturday. So look what it says here. Allah, he led those who come before us astray from Friday 
Saturday, which means Allah, he, he misled the Jews from Friday. He gave them Saturday. And Allah, he misled the Christians and he gave them Sunday. So this is what you say when Abdul, he asks you. A person who have no religion, how he question even about Sabbath? What do you Muslims have to do with the Sabbath? What do you know about the Sabbath? What a brain wash ummah they are. Now, do we have any Muslim here there to call us? And you will see somebody will ask me the same question tomorrow. Well, you know, how we can answer. And, you know, and the guy is saying to me, the Ahmadiyya, the Qaidaniyya. I mean, those guys, their Messiah, he died because of shit. They claim they have a Messiah. And this Messiah, have a, uh, he died because of cholera, diarrhea. So they are worried about our Sabbath, but they are not worried about Messiah. Their Messiah died because of cholera. <laughs> I mean, you know, the Messiah is the one who heals people, right? So how the one who heals people die because of shit? If you remember last time we showed you the, the Ahmadiyya they have in their website, they say is, those who accuse the, uh, the, uh, the Messiah, peace be upon him, they are talking about their Messiah, Ahmad Mirza Ghulam, that he is a false Messiah because he died because of the area. They do not know that the same reason proved that he is the Messiah. So according to them, because he died because of the area, he must be the Messiah. Can you believe it? So a person who follow a person who died because of the area, he is not worried how this person can be the Messiah, but he is going to question you about Sabbath. The religion of fornication, the religion of sleeping around, the religion of a child molestation, the religion of theft, the religion of no ethic, the religion of cheating, the religion of lying, and then they say to you, why oh, you don't follow Sabbath? Why the Muslim calendar is short? Because they are using, you know, the wrong calendar. You know, uh, the lunar calendar, it used to be used in the Middle East by all nations, including the Jews. But what happened, Muhammad is a foolish man, as usual. And he wanted to look different. So he took from the Arab, the tradition, he took even the names of the months, like Ramadan. Ramadan is a month exists before Islam, and the name is not new. But Ramadan before Islam, was not the same as Ramadan today. The Arab, they used to fix the lunar calendar by adding a few days every few years. And the same until now, actually. Those who want to follow this lunar calendar, they have to do correction. Muhammad, because he's an idiot, and he wanted to be different, he told him that this correction is wrong. Chapter 9, verse number 37. So adding days, which will cause delay of occasions, because you are adding days to the, to the year to fix it. This is from the act of shaitan according to Muhammad. So look what happened now to the Muhammadan. Because of the stupidity of Muhammad, Ramadan sometime come in December, Ramadan sometime come in January, July, September, October, etc. Every year have to move few days. Why? Because the city Muhammad, he decided to act differently. He don't want this correction. And who is the one who told him to do that? Supposedly Allah. And this is additional proof that Allah is a stupid God, Aka Muhammad. How we can celebrate? When is the birthday of Muhammad? The Muslim, they say to you, when the birth of, the birthday of Jesus, right? They say to you, when, when was the birthday of Jesus? And then you say to them, oh, we celebrate Christmas, but this is not really the birthday, right? Uh, the Muslims, they question, how come you celebrate in December 25th? Well, what about we question, how come the birthday of your prophet? One year is in January. One year it is in October. One year it's in August. One year it's in September. One year it is in May. One year it's in March. When is the birthday of your prophet? Why it became a mockery? Because simply, Muhammad, he created this verse, claiming that this is from his God, and the one who act the correction of calendar is a kafir. This is from shaitan. For us, when we celebrate the birth of Jesus, 
we are celebrating the occasion we are not celebrating the date because first of all any date even if we know the date is not cannot be celebrated again time doesn't go back so if somebody is born january 1st and then every year he celebrates january 1st in fact this is wrong because even uh, the sun calendar have error in it it's not perfect and you have to add correction we have something called lab year right even in the sun calendar so every three years we have february 29th so you have to add let us say if you are a person who live uh, for 50 years then you have to calculate how many days are added to the year and then you take them off and then you will uh, uh, you will be back to the correct date, but even that date will never be celebrated again because time does not go back, it go forward. So we don't celebrate occasion, sorry, the, the birth date, we celebrate the occasion. When you celebrate the birth of your son, you are not celebrating the date, you are celebrating the occasion, his birth. Do we have any Muhammadan? Who is a brave Muhammadan is not yet missing? Anyone? Who is a Muhammadan would like to join us and show us his intelligence? As you see, your Sheikh is missing. Your Allah is missing. Where is your Allah to answer us? You see, when the God of Islam, he decided to become smarter, so he decided to make a threat to the Christians. So what he said to them? He said, Christian friends, if you don't believe in me, Okay, I am going to erase your face. Uh, I'm going to erase your eyebrows. Man, I'm going to make your face backward. What the heck? You go to Christian Prince to shake hands with him in the front. You find his face in the back. All of this was, ma was made by Muhammad as a threat to believe in Muhammad right now. And nobody believed. But not a single person, Allah, he did erase his face, zip his mouth, put his eyes in the back as the verse is saying. So it was a ketchup threat, like the threat Mr. Sheikh Uthman he faced. Uh, we have your video, we are going to post it later and never posted anything. We have your video, we will find you and nothing posted. He did not even report to the police because it's a lie. So who is a Muslim can explain to us how come, you see, Jesus the Messiah, he cursed the tree, the tree died right away. Do you know, and it's a, it is a fig tree. Maybe some of you do not know how hard really to kill a tree, normal tree, but about fig. Fig are very aggressive. They can live in the middle of nowhere in the desert. They can handle the most harsh weather. They can stay without water for a long time. Jesus says one word to the tree, the tree is dead. Allah, he said million words for the Christians and nothing happened to the Christians, as you see. Catch up, God. He said he will erase our faces. And if you say this is in the day of judgment, well, the stupid Muhammad, he added his own words to cut you busted. Look what he says. The same as we did to those who broke the Sabbath. So this is not going to be happening in the judgment day. The Jews, those, supposedly those Jews, they did fishing on Saturday. And right away, Allah, before the end of the day, he made them pigs and monkeys. So this is not about the judgment day. He, he said it clearly, the same as we did to those who broke the Sabbath. Do we have any Muslim? Who is a beautiful Muslim? Sponsored by Allah. Because remember, Allah will give you all the answers you are looking for. Uh, I'm receiving messages, I think, from yesterday. Okay, okay this is a Muslim, but this is uh, today. All right, let's see this, Abdul.
I hope it's not uh, Mr. Fufu. The, the stalker. You will notice always that Muslims, they are copy paste machine. And their answers, because it is copy paste, it's foolish. We are calling this guy, he is not answering. He is not answering. Let us see someone else. If you are a Muslim, text me and I will call you. Until now, I don't see anyone. <clears throat> okay. Well, until we find somebody who is willing to answer our phone call, we will continue. So what is the proof really that Islam is coming from God? As you see, this book is full of false statements, silly statements, empty threat, um, and uh, illogical against their own religion. As an example, no, this Muslim saying, please call, let us see. <coughs> We are calling him. Yes, my friend, you are, you are a Muslim? Yes, 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 I am, I am Muslim. All right, my friend. Are you? Are you Muslim? No? I am, I am, I am smart, so I'm not a Muslim. You cannot be smart and a Muslim at the same time. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, your voice is cutting. If you have too many applications, close them down. Huh? Uh, yeah. Yeah, as an example, look, 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 look with me. In chapter 4, verse number 48, it says that Allah forgive not those who take partner with him. Is that true? Yes, that's true. That means all the Muslims who converted yeah. in the time of Muhammad, Allah did not forgive them, they will go to hell. Abu Bakr used to take partners, Omar he used to take partners, uh, all the family of Muhammad they take partners, but you just say this is true. So how he promised them heaven, the companion, and they are the one who used to associate with Allah. Huh? Uh, that's, that's, I, I cannot understand you, my friend. No, no, but if they, if they, no, but hear me out, please. If, if they, they my friend, I can't understand yes, the, I can't understand the word. They, I, I cannot understand you. I can't understand you. Sorry. I mean, I'm trying, but uh, this is not, doesn't work. But as you see here, guys, I mean, this is silly. Allah forgive not. The Muslim, they will then they will answer. They will say, "Oh, this is if you die and you did not repent yet." No, that is a lie. Because all forgiveness, all forgiveness, have to be done not after you die. To make it simple for you. The moment of death is the moment nothing can be accepted anymore. Which means you can't pray anyway, unless you are a Muslim, they believe, right? Sometime, you know, some Muslim, they say there's a punishment of the grave, but this is not about prayer no more. That's it, you are in the grave. That's it. Your, your words, your, uh, your statement, your prayer, your act already, it is there and you are dead. So when Allah will forgive you, A Muslim will say to you, well, in the day of judgment, this is when he forgave or done. Okay, no problem. But then 
You repent when? You repent only before you die, not after you, after you die. And here it says, Allah forgive not the one who take partner, which means even if you ask for forgiveness, he will not forgive you. Because forgiving has to be done, the acceptance of forgiving, let us say the application, has to be sent before you die. So in order to send the application to be forgiven, you have to send it on your life. After you die, you cannot send it no more. And the verse is so clear. And there's more verses actually, getting this one is more, you know, more clear. The Quran says, How Allah can forgive anyone who left the religion after he became a believer, anyone who became a kafir, unless he was forced to. Forced to, this is a different story, I can agree. Like, you know, uh, somebody, he forced him, he says, uh, uh, say you are out of Islam or I will kill you. And the guy, he said, okay, I'm out of Islam. Okay, no problem. But the verse is so clear. The one who been who left Islam after he accepted the faith, Allah will not forgive him. And there is more verses. Any Muslim? You want to call me so we can show more verses? Anyone? We go to the front verse just to show you that everything we say is consistent. And I hope you guys are taking notes. Chapter 3, verse number 19. It says clearly that those who became kuffar after they accept Islam, there's no repentance for them. So this is a person, his life, he was a Muslim, he left Islam, and now he went back to be a Muslim. The same as this guy with his name, uh, Edward, the funny guy, idiot, attention seeker. So he was a Muslim. He left Islam, make fun of Muhammad and the Quran. And now he become a Muslim again. But the donkey, he do not know that the Quran made it clear that no repentance is accepted from him. And this is clear in front of your eyes. Do we have any Muhammadan? The verse we are showing you, this is chapter 3, verse number 90. Let us put them next to each other so you can... This is the one, it says, the one who leave Islam and come back to Islam. It's not accepted from him. But you will notice that the Muslims, they will not say that to somebody when I come back to Islam. They will say, brother, yeah, Allah, he can forgive you, brother. No problem, brother. Just come back to Islam, brother. You know, but the verse in front of you.
ثاني محمدا You see, guys, some people, they are div diverting you from our topic, and we see people talking about Israel and Palestine. Uh, wake up and focus with me. If you want to refute a Muslim about Israel, don't be a foolish, and don't quote for him from the Bible, quote to him from his book. The Quran confirmed that this is the land of the Jews. Don't waste your time. They don't believe in the Bible anyway. Chapter 5, verse number 21, it says, O oh my people, enter the holy land which Allah has assigned to you. Who is talking? Moses. End. That's it. Focus. Learn. Get them busted. They are stupid, are you? When you quote verses from the Bible to show him that he is wrong, I mean, how smart you are. This guy, he don't believe in the Bible. But when you show him from his stupid book that he is wrong, then what he will say? He will say that the Quran is weak? The Quran is a lie? Learn. When Muhammad himself, he says that the one who built Jerusalem is Solomon, the son of David. Can he refuse that? Can he spit at his prophet? Can he? They love to divert you from the topic so you don't laugh at their religion. And they are always successful, by the way. Do we have any Muslim? And any Muslim will try to divert us from our topic, but we will block you. You want to call, call. You want to focus with us on the same topic we are talking, you are welcome. You want to start speaking about uh, the city of Palestine, which is not even mentioned in your book, we will get rid of you. Any Mohammedan have a comment? Anyone? If we read here, let's see if we can find the reference for you. Hmm. Um, let us see. Okay, we will not find this one, we will find the other one. The problem always of those people who debate about the religion, most of them they are copy-paste, free, occupy the brain with answers. They don't have their own answers and they don't do their own search. Remember always when you speak to a Muslim, you are speaking to a Muslim. Person who hate your book and you don't accept it. Uh, let us see this person. Hello? Hello? You have a very bad noise in the back. I don't hear you. Okay, now I hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, hi, CP. This is uh, Joseph from India. Okay, uh, Joseph. I have some questions about uh, Islam. Hey, my friend, you why, you said, why you said to me in the chat you want to debate me? No, it wasn't me, CP. Was what? It wasn't me. Uh, let me see. 
I don't know. I saw a chat here. Okay. Oh, not you. Sorry. Okay. All right. Uh, so, uh, so, so, so you are a Christian? Yeah, yeah, I'm a Christian. But don't you know we take only calls from Muslims? No, but uh, actually I, w I wanted to know something about Islam. That is why I wanted to Okay, give me the question Islam. first, please. And remember, please, you know, we have time for Christians to call and time for Muslims to call. What is your question? Okay, so my first question is I was going through some uh, websites where I found out that Al-Tabri says that Jesus was crucified. Is it right or wrong? Is it is it is it right or wrong? And my second question is: Does the word nikah ever appears in the Quran? Nikah. Nikah. Uh, the, the the word in the Quran appear, yeah, but as uh, like inkahu, you know, which means an order, you know, it's the same word, okay. but it's an order, yeah. And nikah does not and mean marriage. Nikah means to f. This is why the prophet he said when your wife she have uh, ministration do everything with her except nikah mm -hmm. you know if nikah mean marriage well she is your wife already so what marriage so when your wife she have ministration uh, mm -hmm. do everything except the nikah and then about uh, about uh, the interpretation of the messiah being crucified or not the muslim they have mm -hmm. tons of books and they are uh, they are they themselves confused uh, because uh, simply the Quran says they are not sure of what happened and Allah will judge between them in the day of judgment. Okay. Okay. That's all? Okay. Yeah, and uh, Nikah, uh, can you give me the verse and the chapter of Siti? Well, let us see uh, uh, the, the hadith first. Well, this is because this will, uh, will help you better. Uh, mm -hmm. We are going to put it out for you. Here we go. And uh, we will show it to you in English, so you do not need to look for it in Arabic. <coughs> Muhammad is teaching the Muslims that you can do everything with your wife when she has her menstruation, except nikah. And the Muslim here in translation, you need to take a note that the Muslim in the translation, they say, they translate the word nikah as sexual intercourse. But the word in Arabic, is nikah. It's now kulla shay and this is Sahih Muslim. Hadith number 302. And this is Sunan ibn Dawood. Hadith number and this is Sahih again. Hadith number 258. And this is uh, again Abi Dawood. Hadith number uh, 2165. And you will see here in Arabic it says Jami'uhum fil biyud wasna'u kulla shay ghayran nikah. So when your wife, she have her menstruation, uh, lay with them, you know, have sex with them, but not intercourse. And nikah simply is to F, right? So when they say, when they lie, they say the word nikah does not mean what Christian Prince is saying, the proven in front of your eyes. And about uh, the Quran, the Quran mentioned that many times. As an example, when Allah, he ordered them, according to the Muslim to get married, he did not say to them, marry. He say mm -hmm. if, F2, F3, F4. And if you could not afford it, then you F1. Chapter 4, verse number 3. Chapter 4, verse number 3. Okay. Yeah, the word there is inkahu, mm -hmm. which means to F them, F2, F3. And you will see the Quran did not start even with 1, start with 2 and 3 and 4. And then if you could not, if you could not afford it, the word here, Tadru, the Muslim, they justify it as, you cannot afford all of those, then eh, then you go for one. Which means the good Muslim is the one who have more uh, uh, in his house. Mm -hmm. And then in 114, the same chapter says that any will never be just. So the Quran is a stupid book. How you say to them, go and F2 and 3 and 4, and then if you cannot be just, then... Uh, and you will never be just, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So actually, let's see, learn to add you. Hold, give me a second just to remember exactly the verse. Uh, yeah. See, actually, uh, a four one twenty nine. So chapter four three, it says, do F two and three and four if you can be just. And then chapter four verse one to one twenty nine, it says, and you will never be just. So the Quran obviously is a stupid book. How you say to them, go and F two and three and four, and if you cannot be just, then one. And then chapter the same chapter verse number one twenty nine says, and you will never be just. <laughs> All right, my friend. Thank you for calling. Okay. Thank. Thanks. Thanks. Let us see. Uh, where is the Muslim? Let us see this guy. If you are a Muhammad, then text me, please, so we can have some of your great knowledge. We like to speak to smart Muslims because they are real. I'm trying to call this guy and it doesn't work. Okay, well, this person is not working. Any Muslim? <clears throat> Anyone? As you see, the Quran is a is a book of uh, dilemma and uh, too many contradiction and too many stupid things. So, in one hand, Allah He says, if you cannot uh, be just, then you go and do one. And then the same chapter says, and no man can be just with women. You cannot. You will never be able to be fair and just between women. So He put a condition. And then he told you that the condition is impossible. And he made it clear to you that you should go and have two, and have a three, and have four. And if you could not be just, which is about, you know, uh, to be equal, treat them equally, mostly is about women, about money, because Muslim really, they don't care for just. As you see, Muhammad himself, he was not just with his wives. And actually, even the statement here about one and two, uh, two and three and four, uh, I believe in the beginning of Islam, Muslim, they did not take it as four wives. They took it as nine. Two plus three plus four. And then if you go and check in the history, you will see how many wives the earliest Muslims they have. Then the Muslim, they will say to you, the Hadith, that the prophet says any one of you have more than four let uh, let them let him divorce the rest but this is not really a quran this is a hadith we do not know if it's true or not uh, don't you find it very strange and very stupid to say go and do two let us say this is marriage as the muslim they claim how you can marry two you go marry two? Like what? Like is that like in a store? You grab two from the shelf in the same time? The language is stupid because the language is not giving us really a right uh, meaning. Because nobody can go and get two in the same time. How that happened? He go to the grocery store, he told him to the guy, can you get me two women? How you can get two women in the same time? So do, you know, uh, and actually this, the whole phrase here is a stupid look. And if you cannot be just with the orphan, what the orphan have to do with this? Because Muslims are having sex with the children. So Muhammad told them, go and have sex with the orphans. And this is the charity. Have you ever heard of a charity like this? You rape a child so you can feed him. So if you cannot uh, be just with the orphan, the Muslim false translation says, marry women of your choice. The, the fact it says, not women of my choice, no. 
whatever your taste is, whatever your taste, like your desire, tab, tab, coming from tayyib. Tayyib means tasty. So, ma taba lakum min nisa whatever tasty women you like to have, starting with two, and you see the translation says here, or, but the fact, it doesn't say or. In Arabic it says, mathna wa thalath, two and three and four. So the Muslim, in order to fix the stupid Quran, they added or, in fact, it says and, and that will make a huge difference because if it's or, then the number is correct. Two, or three, you cannot have two and three, you know, uh, it turned in a number, but, uh, but think about it. Two or three. Hmm. Two or three. But we can make it two and two. That was still four. So what, what, what is that? This is silly. So two or three or four, but in the Arabic, nowhere it says two or three or four. It says, Mathna. And here, if you go and change the translator, let's see. This is Yusuf Ali. Let us see a different translation, Itani. Same false translation. Or, or, or. That's false. Let us see a different translation. A tub. Or, 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 not even a single one of them is honest. Unbelievable. Different translation. Mawdudi, Mr. Dudi. Dudi, he says. Uh, or, he's adding or too. That's false. Muhammad Asad. I think they, they copy from each other. I don't think they are making translation, really. Uh, Okay, if you have a reason to fear that you might, I mean, look, this guy, this guy, he had a new paper, you know, what if you have, okay, a reason, okay, so uh, two or three or four, the same garbage, I don't think we will find one of them is honest, all of them, they are saying or, but the easiest way to do it, this is the letter, what? Here, this letter. Wa, let us zoom in. You go right now, you type the letter in Google translation, and you will see wa in Arabic mean and. Or you can open dictionary. Actually, we can do this. Uh, but maybe that will be hard in search engine because it's one letter that will show us million words. Uh, You will use Google Translation. Peace be upon him. Copy. We go to Google Translation. And we insert the words. Why is not pasting? Where is the paste? Maybe I did not copy there. Let us go again. Okay. Uh, okay, let's just do this. I don't know, for some reason it's not pasting. Here we go. See? It is and. And. Not or. They lie. Because if they translate it correctly, that will cause a problem. Or that will make it nine. Because two and three and four is not the same as two or three or four. And remember, Islam without lies dies. Do we have any Muhammadan? Don't forget to share with your friends, those who they are waiting for us in the Christian Prince. How many times we say to you that any channel of mine, it can be disappearing any second. 
my channel there is still there but people they are waiting for me there and i am here why we told you a million times always you can check in patreon slash christian prince the video i posted last is the last is where i'm going to be very simple subscribe there even without subscription you can see it but uh, talking to the walls or maybe people are so lazy they don't even want to move their finger like i go to patreon uh, no way no anyway we are live with with 600 or 500 or 2000 doesn't matter we are alive alive and muhammad is dead do we have any Muhammad that want to say anything? As you see, wherever we go in the Quran, the Quran is full of stupidity and mistakes, and nothing makes sense. What kind of God he says to man, if you fear not to be dealing fairly with the orphans, what does this have to do with sex? Then go and F2, F2. So why Allah did not say to Adam, let me create for you two Eve and three Eve and four Eves? How Adam was satisfied with one Eve. Maybe Eve at that time was so hot. Maybe she have seven breasts. Isn't it the Muslim they say Islam is the religion of the fitra? Okay, what fitra? They say natural, natural. Okay, a natural. Adam and Eve, man and a woman. Are we are we uh, are we chickens? One rooster and ten chickens. And why Muhammad he have all those wives if Muslim can have only four? Oh, Muhammad he have a privilege. How come his privilege is about his penis? Muhammad is not going to be a happy prophet if he have four women like, like the rest of the Muslims? And then we find that the wives of Muhammad they are fighting, pulling the hair of each other, breaking dishes. Do we have any Muhammadan? Any Muhammadan? I'm thinking to convert to Islam and get my share of women. And then I leave Islam. And then convert to Islam. Each time I feel like, you know, I want to have some more women, I convert. And the Muslim, they say to you that the Christians are jealous from Muslims. Well, it is very funny. We can be Muslims by saying one sentence. What jealous? I mean, you see how easy, like I can be a jealous from, uh, let us say, uh, a person he loves money. He can be jealous from somebody who is very rich. Well, he cannot be rich like him by just being jealous, you know, or, or making or say, saying a statement. In the case of, uh, 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 of Islam, I can, uh, uh, all the jealousy you are talking about, I can get what you have, which is nothing, by the way, because what you have, having four wives is not a privilege, really, it's a stupid thing. This is a curse. Four wives, four mother-in-law, 70 kids. You will live like a donkey. And then you go to heaven. And what you do in heaven? You are holding your penis all day long. You don't even have time to drink water. The Quran says that the Christians, they would love to take you away from your belief and make you a kafir, which is very funny. And what is the reason the Christians they want to do that? Because they are jealous. Have you ever heard of a stupid you know, reasoning? Like, let us say they want to deceive you, okay. Let us say they want to, you know, they are lying to you, okay. But because they are suffering from envy, huh? We can become a Muslim by saying a shahada. It take us two seconds. This is the reason the Christian they want you to leave Islam. Because they have envy. 
Is that because your roads are messed up and there is no security, there's no safety in Islamic countries? A woman, she can't walk in alone in the street to the point she needs a guardian. You see how secure Islamic countries is? A woman, she cannot be safe in the bus, even if there's a thousand men because they will molest her. Don't you Muslim, you put a guards over the graves when a young woman, she die? Because you're afraid that a bunch of Abdul, they will come and they will drag the woman from her grave and she is dead and you will rape her? What in vain? Your children have no education. Go to the Middle East. You go inside university, you will find 60%, 70% of the students, doctors, engineers, lawyers, are Christians. What is the Muslims? They are the majority of the population. We have Inve. Any Abdul? Not in your country, option. What is your country, my friend? What is your country? I never saw an Islamic country is safe and secure. Imarat is the place of prostitution, human trafficking, all madness. Saudi Arabia, a woman will disappear if she walk along the street in five minutes. There is uh, Syria. Uh, Syria is more horrible. Syria now, they kidnap you just to take your money. Syria. Look what this guy is saying. Syria. Good luck with that. A lot of security in Syria. I, I believe you, my friend. Do we have any Mohammedan here? Any brave Muslim would like to call us, join us, show us something good about Muhammad? We can change topic for you. Get Middletown, Chicago. Yeah, but you cannot compare Chicago, even if you claim about Chicago, to anywhere in the Middle East. Middle East, they, you know, they, they kidnap you for reasons. They're extreme. Like in Chicago, you might find two gangs fighting over drugs. They don't go and just get a guy walking in the street. In the Middle East, no. In the Middle East, you walk in the street, somebody look at your eyes, you look at his eyes, right away you have a fight. Roosters. And then there's no just. The police is corrupt. The guy will shoot you. They take you to jail. After five minutes, you are out. My friend, option select. Your country before war is no better. Because if you are not kidnapped from the terrorist, you will be kidnapped from the government. Give me a break, my friend. How you can have security if the security themselves are the one who will kidnap you? We know all the laundry of the Middle East. All of it. Open your mouth, speak one word against your government. You and your family will disappear. And you are telling me you have a security. Jordan, Syria, Emirat, Bahrain, Qatar. The, the prince of Qatar, he put his father in jail. His father. <laughs> uh, and the king of Jordan right now, he, is, he stripped his brother from his rights. The Arab, you know, we know what the Middle East is. The, the number one people who betray, number one people who stab you in the back. Nobody, nobody is so good in stabbing in the back as the as people in the Middle East. Not Middle Eastern, you know. If you go to Israel right now, 
95% of the crimes is in the Arab territory. And I challenge anyone to say to me, I'm lying. Arab territory, drugs, prostitutions, kidnapping, killing, theft, you name it. In the heart of Israel. If you go right now and check how many Muslims in jail in France, you will find how high the percentage. But the Muslims in France, they have a low, I mean, they are not, they are a big in number, but they are still a very low minority in France. So why the majority of people who they are in jail, they are Muslims. Uh, for sure, religion have a huge impact in the behavior of a human being. And Islam does not teach you to be decent. You know, when Muhammad, he says a man, he can lie to his wife and the wife, she can lie to her husband. What kind of a society we are creating? The whole society lie to each other. This is why, you know, people, they ask me, what do you think about Middle Eastern? I say, I'm the last one to shake hand with Middle Eastern people. For sure, there is exception. But generally speaking, they are lying people. They are hypocrite. And not only Muslim, by the way, Muslims, Christian, doesn't matter. The whole culture is corrupt. You go to a person, you visit him, Hey, they give you a hug. How are you doing? We miss you. And even they kiss you, by the way. And then the second you leave, they start talking about you, about your wife, about your family. I mean, they rip you apart. This is the Middle East. And they are so proud. Each one of them, he thinks that he is coming from heaven. They are the highest. Like, look at the American, disgusting American. Look at the European, man. Those European are disgusting, you know? And... And then you look at them, you see nothing but a piece of shit. Your street is full of garbage. Your government is corrupt. You yourself is a thief. You take a, br a bribe if you can. You cheat on your wife if you get opportunity. As soon as soon, you give him opportunity. Like a Middle Eastern man, he go overseas. The company, they send him for a job. Okay? The first thing he do, he go to night club. Finally, he's free. But they are the one who say the name of Allah and everything that, inshallah, mashallah, alhamdulillah, mash. They, nobody mentioned the name of Allah as they do. But they are number one cheaters in the world. Anyway, reality. Reality. And not only that, just to show you how, how corrupt they are, if a man, if a man, if a boy, if a young man, or even an old, he start having a sexual relationship out of marriage, the family, they will not be upset. If their daughter do that, oh man, they will kill her. They, this is a broad shame to the family. They are very hypocrite. And then what their daughter do, they do it under the table secretly, because how their son is having sex around, Simply because there's other daughters from other families, they are doing that, right? Which means the whole society is corrupt. But everything is under the table. But when they find that their son is doing that, they are proud about their son, how many girls he step with. <laughs> this is the Middle East. Welcome. The land of corruption and fabrication and lying. Uh... You know, at least in America, if a guy, he have a girlfriend, he say, I have a girlfriend. He, he do, you know. There, everything is under the table. They drink alcohol. The second you give them a black, you know, like a, a closed door and nobody knows, like a, a guy who drink, the party started. Drugs, hashish, prostitution. They bring one girl and 10 guys, and one after one, they sleep with her. Go, go, learn. And then they school you about the ethic in the Middle East. And as you see, I'm speaking of not only uh, Muslims, even Christians, they, 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 they got their shares of the corruption too. Uh, Do we have any Mohammedan? Uh, 
Anyone? And you know why they will act good if their prophet was a corrupt man? He went to his own son house when the husband is not there and he flirted with the wife. This is the best man. He would go to the Middle East, he would say to you, the prophet was the most ethical, he is the highest. Who can be like the prophet? I mean, who can be like the prophet? Do we have any brave Muhammadan would like to say something to us? Good. You are a very hypocrite. Any Muhammadan, may they, may they. If you call us, my friend, and you defend your religion, Allah will increase the numbers of the versions you will receive. For you are doing jihad. You will get extra versions, and even their ass will be bigger. Like the normal ass is one mile. How in the world the Prophet, he promised them one mile ass women? And what does that mean? So the, the, the Muslim, like there's some hadith says the, uh, uh, and, and the man will be 90 kilometer tall and the women she will be 30 kilometer high. Uh, some hadith says that he will be the same as Adam. I remember once I was doing a similar in the Philippines and I was showing a hadith where it says that in the day people they go to heaven, the Muslims, all of them they will look like Joseph. All of them they will look like Joseph. Joseph supposedly was very handsome in the Quran that when the women they saw him and they were using knives to do vegetables because he's so so good looking they cut their hands like I mean come on you, think, you see Joseph you cannot and they start cutting their hands and they did not notice that they are cutting their hands because he's so good looking so I was saying showing to them the hadith about uh, they will look like Joseph and there was a guy a Christian brother he, his name is Joseph and he put his hand up. He says, they will look like me. The guy, he look really, may God bless him. He have no teeth, you know. He don't look good at all. <laughs> you know, I mean, as a, in, the, in the scale of look good. And people, they die laughing, you know. I mean, he's very humble to make example of himself. So he said, sir, they will, I, my name is Joseph. They will look like me. <laughs> his teeth is gone. His, you know, I mean, I was saying, uh, my, trust me, you look good, my friend. God bless you. But it was very funny. All of us, we will look like Joseph. All of us. I mean, can you believe how stupid this heaven is? And this is why the Quran says that the women, they will be restrained in their tent. Why? Because if they get out, all men look the same. How they will know which is the husband? You know what I mean? So they have to be restrained inside the tent. You see here the translation says, uh, 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 this is false translation. It says they will be restrained inside their tents. Because if your wife, she get out, how she will find you? All, of me, all the men, they look the same. And not only that, all the women look the same, especially the whore. All the whore, they have the same hair, the same face, the same age, the same height. And we as men, we will have, we will be 33 years old. We will be the same age of Jesus, same face of uh, 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 Joseph, and the same height of Adam, which means sixth floor high. So you go to a dating website in the heaven of Allah, you will find all women, they have one profile. The same age, the same name, and even they sing the same song. And you know, if all the women, they look the same, so what's the point of having many of them? What's the point of changing the women? If she is the same, it is just a copy. 
And all of them, their name is Hur. So you say Hur, all, you say yes. Look, no, I talk to you. Yes, sir, you said Hur. All of us, we are Hur. What kind of religion this religion is? And then the women, she will wear 70 veil, and all of them, they are see-through. And not only that, even the bones of those women, you can see through. Which is very ugly. Imagine. I mean, we are looking now, this hadith is about boogers. I'm looking for something and the boogers is coming in front of me. In case you do not know, the Muslim, they have a big problem in the time of the Prophet with boogers. Because Muslim, they used to put their boogers in the wall, in the floor, everywhere. Um, but this is not what we are looking for. Okay, so look at this hadith here. Ibn Umar reported from the Prophet saying, Paradise is discorded, uh, uh, decorated, sorry, for Ramadan, from the beginning of the year till the following year. Have you ever heard of a stupid thing like this? Well, how are you decorated from the beginning of Ramadan to the, to the coming of Ramadan? Because this means you did not change the decoration. Do the decoration of Allah will be ripped by the wind and we need to replace it? LED light is burned? When the first day of Ramadan comes, a wind under the throne blows some of the leaves of paradise. On the middle, with the bright, large eyes. And they say, who is the one, uh, the Medians, sorry, the Medians, the Hur, with big, large eyes, and they will say, My Lord, appoint us a husband from among the servants whom you shall be happy with, and who will happy with us. This is what the women, they do every Ramadan in the heaven of Allah under the tree. They sing the same song. They are horny. Please, Allah, appoint a husband for us. A man, he will be happy with us, and we will be happy with him. And you will notice that those women's songs activated with the winds, not with the Bluetooth. Uh, a woman in the heaven, she will say to a wife in the earth, this is a conversation between the wife of the Abdul and earth. Like Sheikh Uthman, he have a wife. So the Hur of Uthman in heaven, they will say to the wife of Uthman, eh, hey, listen, 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 listen. Okay, listen. The large-eyed median saying, you must not to annoy him. God curse you. He only is passing guest with you and is about to leave you and come to us. I'm telling you, women are aggressive, man. So those are the whore saying that to a married woman and she is a Muslim in earth. Strip at you. Don't annoy him, okay? He is for us. He is there temporarily. This is what Muhammad was busy with. Telling fiction, stupid stories. And those people, they are, uh, the women are fighting over me. That's good. So good to be true. My friend, if women are fighting over you, you are at risk. You better buy insurance. Don't get excited. Any Abdul?
Do you think Hezbollah can be defeated by Lebanese army? You know, Lebanese army, you made me laugh. Half of the Lebanese army is members of Hezbollah. You know, the Shia, they are controlling Lebanon. The president is a, is a Christian, but he is a fraud. You know, all what he cares is making money, give him positions. And the Shia, they are in all branches of government. The police, the, you know, and I'm talking about Hezbollah and Harakat Amal, you know. So, no. If a war happened, the Lebanese army will split, will not stay. So those who they are with Hezbollah, they will join Hezbollah. The only one can defeat them is Israel. And if the Christians decide to go to war, they can defeat them too. But the Christians, they are divided. Do we have any Abdul? Anyone? I'm waiting for my package, the one in heaven. See, if any female of you here bother me, do you know what the whore waiting for me in heaven will say to you? Hey, Sahih Christian, how are you, brother? This guy, Sahih Christian, is an, an, is an old brother of mine. Uh, I have known him for many, many, many years. And he used to come to my chat room almost every day in Paltok. So we have long, long, long years. Great person. But as long as you are here, Sahih Christian, let us uh, where is his name? Here we go. You are a moderator. Do we have any Muslim here? Any Muslim? Who is a Muslim would like to introduce Islam to us? I like to join Islam. Anyone? Look like we are out of customers. Zainab, call you? Well, you have to text me, Zainab, so I can call you. If you make, if I make you moderator, you will suckle me? Really? Well, I prefer to get a cow. Any Abdul? If you are a Muslim, you need to text me in Skype, and then I will call you. Very simple. Anyone? Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, I mean, a religion teach that a woman, she can suckle a stranger, and they speak about decency and ethic. I mean, what the purpose of this suckling? A woman, she is adult, a man, he's adult, and they are not from the same family. And even if you are from the same family, imagine if your mother, your mother, huh? and you are now a man, how in the world you are going to put your mouth in, over her breast? 
even if you are her, her son, but here the case is not for the son, the case here for a stranger. Even Aisha, she ordered her nieces, no one can enter upon her unless they have to cycle him 10 different times. And this was a verse in the Quran, but sadly, the goat ate it. And I believe strongly the goat did not eat this verse. I believe the one who ate it is the Muslims, because it was an embarrassment. Because think about it. If the goat ate the verse, don't the Muslim they say we memorize the Quran? What happened to those who memorized the Quran? Okay, the goat ate the verse. Did the goat ate your memories, Muslims? Did the goat continue like she went, like she is a Trojan horse? She went to every single Muslim memory and she ate his memory, formatted his brain. And how and what kind of a goat she is very selective? Look, this goat, she select two chapters. She didn't eat the whole Quran. She ate only the one about stoning and the one about breastfeeding for adult 10 times. You know that the goat, she don't have hands, don't you? So what the goat did, the, the, the book was under the pillow of Muhammad. The goat, she jumped in the top of the bed of Muhammad. She flipped Muhammad from the bed. She jumped him. Muhammad is dead. Muhammad fell down. And now the goat, she grabbed the book from under the pillow. And then the goat, she opened the cover by her mouth. And then she have a very long uh, uh, tongue, my friend. It's very wet too. She start flipping pages, reading, flipping pages, reading. Not this one. Flipping pages, reading, flipping pages. Stop. Oh, we found this one. Breast feeding for adult. This is the one I need to eat. <clears throat> and she start eating. And then she flip again. Reading, flipping, reading, flipping. Using her tongue, flipping, reading, flipping, reading. And then she found the verses for stoning to death. Oh, stop. This is the one I want. She start eating it. Have you ever heard of a funny, stupid story more than this? And as long as the Muslim, they knew that the verses, and they knew the verses, and knew that the verses was there, well, just add them back. Put them back. The, the goat ate the verse. Okay, what is the verse? The goat knows best. And the funny, they go after the Christian, they say to them, your Bible is corrupted. Our friend, have you ever heard of a Bible eaten by a goat? Imagine the Christian says that Jesus, he gave us a, a Bible, but the goat ate it. <laughs> and the funny, they say to you that the Quran is protected by Allah. I mean, a goat did beat Allah. It's a goat, man. It's not even a cow. I mean, if a cow, I would say the Hindu behind it. It's a goat. Man, peace upon her. And Abdul can answer. And then the Muslim, they will say to you, this is the Aif. It says here, Hassan. Hassan means good. Hassan, one of the names of the grandsons of Muhammad, supposedly. Hassan means good. Have you ever heard of religion? I mean, look how they lie. It says Hassan. They say, no, this is the Aif. It says Hassan. Hassan means good. The Aif, the Aif. Idiot. Isn't it Hassan one of the names of your prophet, the grandsons? And it means good. And you know what? If I know this goat, I will shoot her in the head. Because, because of her, we lost one of the most funny verses ever in the Quran. Anyway, do we have any Abdul? Anyone? Israel, Mujahid, Christian Mujahid, international, why Pakistan call himself Palestinian? I don't know what this uh, conversation is about. Focus with me, guys, focus with me. Otherwise, I will send you to heaven. I have connection, I'm an Arab. Because God, he speak only Arabic. Hey, Muslim, by the way, if you want a translator to, to, to translate your prayer for you, because Allah is a stupid, he don't understand your language. I mean, how in the world you speak to him in Urdu, and he is not a person who speaks Urdu? Adam, the first man, 
when Allah created him, he spoke Arabic. This is the language of Allah. Any Abdul? And by the way, this goat is until now wanted. So if you have any information, you can call the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia or Hassan Nasrallah, the head of Hezbollah. Because the Shia, in case you do not know, they agree that the Quran is corrupted and the only true Quran is the one with, uh, what's his name? Al-Mahdi. Fatima, she will give it to Al-Mahdi and Mahdi will bring the Quran with him. Quran of Fatima is the only correct one. And you ask them, what is the Quran is? They say it's hidden. Everything is hidden in Islam. Like, like Hassan Nasrallah. Where are you, Hassan Nasrallah? He's hidden. Uh, that's America, that's Israel. You don't even dare to put your head outside. And you have, he claim he have 80,000 or 90,000 fighters. But yet you're right, you don't dare. After 90,000 fighters, you don't dare to put your head out in the air. Hmm. Yeah. What do you do? <laughs> yeah, this is another stupid thing. Oh boy. Any Mohammedan? Look like today it's dry. Yeah, this is a verse actually here. Which is very funny. <clears throat> uh, the Muslim, they translated uh, uh, this Arabic here. They wish that you should compromise. Uh, between two bracket in religion and courtesy with them so they too would compromise with you but look at the stupidity and look at the and the dummy statement but isn't muhammad he compromised everything you ask the muslims why muhammad did not forbid the drinking right away they would say to you he have to compromise slowly slowly you know you cannot say to people who smoke right away stop smoking this is a compromise people they go to the mosque and they are drunk did muhammad forbid them from drinking no he said don't go to the mosque when you are drunk he did not say don't drink don't go and because the arab they were laughing at muhammad and his people they go to the pray in the mosque and they collapse. The guy he stand up, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rahim. Abdul, what happened? Even Muhammad, he compromised with dogs. Dogs they used to go inside the mosque, the only mosque he have, and they piss in the middle of the mosque. And Muhammad never clean after them. Never even shout at them. And this is Sahir Bukhari. My father said, during the lifetime of Allah Apostle, dogs used to urinate and pass through the mosque. Between two bracket, come and go. I like it, by the way. I mean, look how the Muslim, they explain it to us because we might be slow. Look, come and go, come and go, come and go. And they come to do what? To piss. And they come back to do what? To piss. So the mosque in the time of Muhammad was the bathroom of dogs. And Muhammad never sprinkled water over it. Do you see it? And you need to remember the mosque at that time was a small, tiny room. It's not like the mosque you see today. You know, they put marble, air conditions, massive, huge. It was just a tiny room. And the dogs, they go, they lift their leg up. And I don't know, they are pissing over who? Because dogs, they like to piss over something. No, they don't just piss in the road, like, you know, you have to find like a, a can, a tree, a leg, you know, maybe the leg of Muhammad. So they go, they go in, they piss, and they go. And then what Muhammad do? He never sprinkled water. Do you see it? Do you remember what Jesus did? 
when some Jews they were buying and selling, just buying and selling. They are not pissing. He said, you made the house of my father a bazaar. He flipped the table on them. Muhammad, dogs go. Actually, there's a, there's a hadith about a, a Bedouin. A Bedouin man, he come inside the mosque. And he ends up, zip, he got to grab his penis. And he start pissing. The Muslim, they want to say to him, stop. The prophet says, let him finish, let him finish. Do you know why? He's a Bedouin. That's mean he have a big tribe. And if we stop him, he will have a problem. So Muhammad compromise. 